Our final segment with Father Chad. Jesse, you had a question uh, regarding the catechism of the Catholic Church. Yeah, per- I want to get into eschatology with Good. Father Chad Perfect. Ripperger. He's, yeah, let's again, do it. He's an academic. He's a theologian. Yeah. Uh, he, he's he's what I call a black belt in spiritual warfare. <laughs> That's a good way of describing him. Uh, uh, unlike some other people that are white belts and yellow belts. Father, I, I send you, I, I, I just send you, uh, contacted you, paragraph 675 of the Catechism, 676 and 677. Those are the three ber- paragraphs of the Catechism and the New Catechism that talk about eschatology and uh, what's going to happen before the end of the world and the second coming of Christ. Can you, sh- I-, I want you to put your professor head on and, and, to, and to teach us, share the paragraph and then kind of give us a hermeneutic on his, break it down to us, uh, you know, th- through, through your, through your lenses as a theologian philosopher, as an, as, and as an exorcist. Uh, so 675 says, before Christ's second coming, the church will pass through a final trial that will shake the faith of many believers. The persecution that accompanies her pilgrimage on earth will unveil the mystery of iniquity in the form of religious deception, offering men an apparent solution to the problems in the price of, at the price of apostasy from the truth. The supreme religious deception is that of the Antichrist, a pseudo-Messianism by which man glorifies himself in the place of God. So the first paragraph is talking about, so there's, they used to make a distinction between what they call the minor chastisement and the a major chastisement. So the minor chastisement is look, looks like about what we're about to go through. Mm-hmm. So we, we know that like an La Salette, our lady said that there's going to be the chastisement and then there'll be 25 years of good harvest. And then the, the time of the antichrist comes. And it's during that time of the antichrist, you're going to see the morals and the spiritual life of people implode so rapidly and even worse than we're seeing today it's going to get even worse and it's during that time frame that the antichrist will kind of show itself but it's during that time frame that you're going to see severe persecutions of christians and they're basically going to have to apostatize and part of this has to do with the fact that a lot will just apostatize because of the fact that the antichrist will be so alluring and so charismatic and will be hard without a specific grace from god to resist getting sucked into what he says and then uh, 670, uh, or 676, Antichrist deception already begins to take shape in the world every time the claim is made to realize within history that mess- messianic hope, which can only be realized through history, through the eschatological judgment. The church has rejected even modified forms of falsification of the kingdom to come under the name of millenarianism, uh, especially the intrinsic perverse political form of secular messianism. So basically what this is, is that... <clears throat> um, that uh, that there are that there's going to be precursors in relationship to the Antichrist that we'll actually see um, that will actually come. So there's supposed to be kind of a lead up, but there will be other people that will uh, in Christ Himself even said it in the Scriptures. They will, you know, there will be pseudo prophets and so yeah, they will become before, and they're going to be saying specific things. These are things that are going to lead up to it um, that we'll actually begin to see if you live long enough then um, you'll actually be, see, for example, the return of uh, Elijah and Enoch um, because they, they, they're still in heaven. They haven't died yet, um, as we know from Scripture. So, they'll, But they will come back to give testimony, but there'll be false people, prophets leading up to that. And you're going to see uh, a lot of stuff at the church at that point will also shrink to nothing because similar to what we see in relationship to the faithful now, but even in a worse situation. Mm. Uh, 677, the church will enter the glory of the kingdom only through the final Passover when she will follow her Lord in his death and resurrection. The kingdom will be fulfilled then not by a historical triumph of the church through a progressive ascendancy. So it's not going to be that. uh, I mean, after the minor chastisement, the church will kind of quasi resurrect. But then when it comes to the time of the the, uh, major chastisement, which is at the time of the Antichrist, it's going to church is good. It's not the church's victory is not going to be at that time, just as Christ's victory um, was, at, even though he went through the passion and he died. And that's the v- ultimate victory. Nevertheless, the manifestation of that full victory isn't going to happen until the resurrection. So that's what the, what the and so the church will follow basically that same path mm-hmm. that Christ himself went through in his own life. Um, and so it'll be look, it will look like. Um, the Antichrist has put the Catholic Church to death, basically. God's triumph over the revolt of evil will take the form of the last judgment after the uh, final cosmic upheaval of the passing world. So after the final chastisement, at a certain point, Christ will come down. He will put the Antichrist to death at that point. And shortly after that, then there's the resurrection of everybody. We assemble in the Valley of Josephat for the final judgment. Everybody's there, even the fallen angels, everybody from heaven and earth 
uh, and under the earth will come and be present. And that's when everything is righted, everything is correct. And that's the final triumph of the church. Wow. Love it. See that he, he put on his professor hat. I know, but I loved it, man. <laughs> That's a very condensed version. Yeah, do you think? <laughs> it's really condensed. Terry, we should we should at a conference invite Father to give a whole hour on six seventy five to oh, six seventy seven. Yeah. Just a whole a whole hour on it. Oh yeah. It, it, look, and look the problem is, is I'm not an expert. I'd have to do some reading on those. I mean, I know I've read a lot <laughs> yeah. on those, but I don't, there's always little areas that you know I got to fill those out. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, Father, let me ask you on six seventy five where it talks about. This mystery of iniquity in the form of a religious deception, offering yes. man an a man an apparent solution to their problems. I mean, there's a lot of things that probably could fall into that right now. When I think about transhumanism, maybe AI, yeah. communism, socialism, uh, relativism, well, I mean, or even in the church, modernism. Ah, that's the one so, I think. Yeah. So uh, there's, yeah. so just as there will be okay. the Antichrist will look like he's the solution to everybody's problems, both material and other and spiritual. There is the precursors and spiritually, I think we're seeing the lead up to that, which is the synthesis of all heresies, which is modernism. Yes. Yes. Because it seems to, it seems to kind of appeal to people, especially human nature in a fa- state of fallen nature, mm-hmm. where it tends to appeal to us because the, the standard of truth becomes internally, which is of course diabolic. And so that's, that's the appeal. So there's kind of this pre cursors and i think modernism is one of those can i throw something out about wow. modernism we all know that in 1925 the holy father had that consecration to the sacred heart christ the king right okay i read the original prayer father chad and it talked about muslims and converting muslims that yeah. prayer it was removed that and part jews of, and jews yeah muslims and jews that got removed out of the the words of the holy father back in 1925 here's my point i Am I off? Why can't we use the original document? Like when I was in a monastery in the late seventies, Saint Maximilian Kolbe, you said that we were going to pray, "O Mary, conceive without sin," and we pray for the Freemasons. Then they got they took that out of that prayer too. What's that all about? Is that modernism taking out that uh, those prayers? Yeah, I think it's a it's an it's an indicator of several things. I think it's an indicator that um, already by the 1920s up through the 1950s, there was already the infiltration yeah. with the church had already begun, and there was also um, so what happens is certain people get into positions of power, or there becomes um, you know it's basically human respect. Oh, we don't want to offend them, or yeah. there's this or there's that. Right. Just get people in possession. We just remove it, right? And I think that's what you were beginning to see. And so I think that um, already then, and too, by you have to remember modernism. Um, if you read the the, I wrote the book called uh, Operative Points of View, where I talk about the stages of modernism, mm-hmm. where the initial stage. Um, is uh, there's there's but then there's an there's an intelligentsia phase where they get into the intelligentsia, and once they do that, they start influencing scripture. By so by yeah. the time you get to the late eighteen hundreds, scripture's already decimated. They got into the and this is why um, Pope Pius X required the. Uh, um, oath against modernism because it, it was already recognized. They were in the seminaries or the universities, and they were all. That also meant that by that time they were also working their way up through the magisterium and getting into positions of power. And so you started to see that particular problem actually happening. So by the time he, by the twenties, they're already there. They're already working their ways in. Plus, and you got the infiltration of the communists, which is actually Huge. somewhat public knowledge. Yeah, and so you, between those two things, the, the the modernism taken over, which then became the uh, the inter- intellectual groundwork through which the the communists and the Freemasons and also basic heretics can push through their theology. And so that's why you tended to see that things happen. So by the time you get to the 50s, it's already over pretty much. Wow. Wow. F- Father Ripperger is is a uh, Eve's DuPont book on prophecies that uh, it's a it's a pretty reliable source to kind of grasp things like this. You know, I, yeah it's 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 generally considered um kind of a uh, Textus Classicus is kind of like that's where uh, you know a lot of people start. So if you want to, that's where you can start. There are some debates about his interpretation of certain things, but the good part about it is he's just compiling things and putting it to lay it out. So it's worth it's 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 if you're going to study this material, that's definitely one of the books that you need to have read. 